So in this video, we're gonna look at a couple of the things that you need to do when you're managing a patient who already has an NG tube or a nasogastric tube. So let's say we just placed this NG tube um, and it's been confirmed by abdominal x-ray, that's the gold standard. So the first thing we need to do is actually measure the length of the tube from the tip of the nose from the nose to the tip of the NG tube. Now most NG tube packages will actually come with a little tape measure like this, um, but if not, you can find one on your unit. So once you get that measurement, you want to record that in centimeters and make sure that length continues to get documented and communicated from nurse to nurse. And what that does is it allows us to know if the NG tube has moved at all from its original position. So we want to check that at least once a shift or if we're concerned about placement. And you also want to secure it. You notice we taped it to the gown. Make sure it's secured so it doesn't pull. The other thing we're going to do with these NG tubes is flush them with 30 to 60 mils of water every four to eight hours, depending on your orders, or before and after we use it for something. Keeps it nice and patent. So you'll get your 60 mil catheter tape syringe, fill it with tap water. Remember, the gut's not sterile, so tap water is totally fine. Then you're going to attach the syringe to the NG tube and flush gently. It should flush easily and without any kind of resistance. Now one thing here is you want to avoid super cold water because that can actually cause really bad stomach cramping. So room temperature tap water is just fine. Just make sure as you're flushing that you're counting these as intake measurements. Now, if the patient has the NG tube for gastric decompression, we'll still flush and we'll just reattach it to suction right away um, and suck what everything you suck out gets counted as output. So another thing we may do for a patient with an NG tube is to measure gastric residual volumes. That's what's left over in the stomach even after everything we've done. So you'll use your 60 ml syringe to aspirate the stomach contents and you'll get a graduated cylinder to collect them in so you can see the total volume. So you'll do that one syringe at a time until the stomach is empty. Notice that you have to clamp the NG tube when you're done. Some NG tubes you can have something called a Lopez valve that actually has a stopcock on it, or they may have a physical clamp. For these harder silicone uh, Salem sumps, you will have to physically bend it to clamp it. Now this is something we used to do routinely every four hours, but evidence-based practice now shows it's actually not recommended to do routinely. Instead, we usually check anytime we suspect a problem, like signs of reflux or abdominal distension. Once you're getting air bubbles, just keep pulling until you physically can't pull anymore and then measure the total volume. We don't really get concerned until we're over about four or 500 milliliters. Now, specifically make sure that you know your facilities policy here. Uh, some facilities haven't totally caught up with the evidence, so they will tell you you have to check every four hours. They'll tell you that if it's over 200, you shouldn't um, be returning. And so uh, feel free to be an advocate for your patient based on what the evidence shows, but make sure that you know what your facility's policy is. So once you have gotten your total, you'll just return those gastric contents to the patient. And again, flushing gently and easy. As you are looking at these gastric residual volumes as well, you have also want to be noting the color um, and the character of it. So you'll notice these were kind of a brownish green and they were translucent. That's normal for stomach contents. You might see food. That's fine as well. If you're seeing blood or coffee grounds, you know that's a problem. You're going to need to report that to the provider. So once you finish flushing all of the stomach contents back into the stomach, again, make sure you know your facility's policy for this. Um, then you're going to flush it again with tap water, about 30 to 60 milliliters. Now keep in mind what's going on with your patient as well. If you have someone on fluid restriction, you may want to flush with 10 to 20 instead of 30 to 60. So make sure that you are aware, make sure that you know what your orders are for your patient. Once you get that NG tube flushed out, then you can clamp it. Um, if you do have your NG tube to suction, you can put it back to suction at this point. And then the last thing we want to do for these patients is every shift we want to do oral and nasal care. So that would include, you know, letting the patient brush their teeth if they're able or you brushing their teeth using mouthwash. We also want to use a warm washcloth and wash around the nares. And we want to assess really closely for any kind of skin breakdown. We'll actually usually apply a lubricant jelly around the tube as well, because these hard tubes, especially the hard ones, can really cause pressure ulcers. So that's uh, the major highlights for caring for a patient with an NG tube. Make sure, again, of course, that you are managing their tube according to your orders and your facility's policy. We also have another lesson on giving meds through an NG tube, so make sure that you check that out as well.
Now go out and be your best selves today, guys. As always, happy nursing. Thanks for watching another nursing.com lesson. Click the link below in the description to watch thousands more lessons over on nursing.com. Also, be sure to hit the subscribe and the little bell to make sure you're reminded when new lessons come out. And if you wanna just keep watching more lessons, go ahead and click this video over here to continue learning. Like we always say here at nursing.com, happy nursing.